The Huntington Theater is staging a production that tells about personal struggles with economic decline, in this case, the breakdown of the U.S. auto industry in Detroit. The play is called Skeleton Crew, part of a trilogy by Dominique Moriso. Joining us are two of the cast members, Takara Cash and Patricia Floyd. Thank you very much for being with Thank us. Thank you. Thank you for, for having, having us. us. <laughs> I'm going to start with uh, Takara because you, you knew the playwright. Uh, she's from Detroit. You're from Ohio, the Rust mm -hmm, Belt. Uh, mm -hmm. Talk about your first meeting with her. Oh, my goodness. My first meeting with Dominique uh, was a reading that I did for her of, of a play that it hasn't even been published, but I was referred to her by a, a mutual colleague and friend of ours. And uh, the moment I sat down to start, you know, reading the lines, you know, Dominique was like, where are you from? <laughs> and I'm like, Dayton, Ohio. And she's like, yeah, you sound like you, you have the tongue of my plays. And I'm like, I, yeah. And, and, and vice versa, I never had an opportunity to read work that felt so like home. Uh, coming out of my mouth, you know, I'd had that experience. I'd, I've never had that experience, but I've had the experience of learning different dialects and different tongues, and <clears throat> the classic playwrights, the Shakespeare's, the Chekhov's. And, but to to do a play, to read a play, and as the words come out, it's just coming out like how I speak, how I was raised. It was I knew that she was a special. She was going to be a special playwright to me, um, for <laughs> for as long as as we could develop a friendship and. Uh, and we have, you know, I consider her a friend, a colleague. I'm super proud of her, and uh, her talent is is very much needed. Patricia, this play is about a union plant shutting down. Uh, yes. This is your life in Detroit, it's your hometown, right? Yeah, so, you know, I've kind of watched this 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 happen. Um, my grandfather was was the union rep, which is the the character that I play in this in this piece. and you know, obviously he retired still kind of at the beginning of like when we had the big Japanese auto boom and, and whatnot. But since then, you know, you, you drive through and it's like, you know, just blocks and blocks of, as we call them in the play, these ghost towns, you know, that, that used to be bustling, you know, with, with activity. I've actually seen tumbleweed. I've actually seen tumbleweed. So it's it's been it's been devastating, you know, but Detroiters are very resilient, you know, they're very resilient people and and they'll they're fighting back. They're fighting for a comeback. You know, these days, you know, factory jobs, we usually think that they pay pretty poorly. Uh, but talk about what you grew up with, because these were union well, jobs these were, and there was yeah, a culture. They, yeah, they, yeah. They, were, they were great jobs. You know, you if you're talking like say 19, you know, 75. And, and entry level was like fifteen, sixteen dollars an hour. Um, you had two family, you know, to say mom and dad work in the factory and with overtime, you know, they were making pretty good money. It's like most of the people I knew had vacation property, you know, or they had boats or RVs or you know. So there was a whole, you know, obviously Michigan is a nice outdoorsy kind of state, so, you know, boating, fishing, you know, it's the Great Lakes state, so a lot of, you know, water sports and that sort of thing, and you could afford to do that, you know, and it wasn't that, that you know, these were people who were born to wealth or, or anything like that, they were just hardworking people who actually were able to, you know, enjoy the benefits of their hard work, you know, and now not so much, you know, the the, the jobs, and the factories that still exist now are paying what they were paying in the 70s. But needless to say, you know, our, our cost of living is a lot higher now. So, Takara, so uh, yeah, you and Patricia are two different generations in this play. You're the younger uh, person. Uh, talk about her dilemma and what, what goes on with that. Yes, uh, Shanita has a particular dilemma during the play. She, we see her starting the play eight months pregnant. Uh, but this is not a deterrent to her uh, in doing this work. You know, she, she's very adamant about uh, staying on the line until the last second, you know what I mean? Until she's about to drop. Uh, but it just goes to show you how much pride she takes in this work, um, which is very uh, specific to people who have done this work because coming from the Rust Belt, uh, Dayton, Ohio, a lot of my family members worked for GM. Uh, and as a matter of fact, during the course of this show, uh, much of my research has been talking to them just about their time in the factory, my aunts, my cousins, you know. Um, 
And they, they take a lot of pride, and they took a lot of pride in that work, you know, before it came to an end in 2009 when GM shuttered the Moraine assembly plant. That was the main assembly plant in Dayton, the G General Motors Moraine assembly plant. Was there something new that you learned from them when you started talking to them or something they showed you about their pride? Mm. <laughs> when I was talking to my cousin who uh, used to drive the forklift, you know, she said she drove the forklift there. And I've, this, I've grown up with this cousin. She's a big cousin of mine for years. And I never knew that she had the capability of driving a forklift. I was like, you've driven a forklift? She said, yeah. I was like, you've <laughs> never talked about that. She was like, eh. It was it was fun, you know, <laughs> you know, and and finding out that my aunt Leslie, I knew that she worked for GM for quite some time, but I didn't know she had put in thirty five years, and so you know, when it shuttered, like that was that was her livelihood, you know what I mean, and um, finding out that the livelihood of the women in my family and being able to carry it into this role on stage has been the most meaningful artistic process I maybe have ever had. Uh, Pat, you play the shop steward, uh, yeah. uh, you know, a, a senior uh, member of the crew here, but uh, yeah. uh, talk about this particular shop steward. Well, she, <laughs> she follows her own rules. She, she follows her own rules. Um, the thing is, she has a little dilemma, too. Um, she, she gambles a bit. Um, so, and it's led to some, some interesting uh, predicaments for her. Um, and the thing is, she's, she's super maternal. So really, these people, and I think with any job that you've been on for a long time, these people become your family. Mm -hmm. So she's very protective of, of her, uh, her little ones, <laughs> even <laughs> though they may not necessarily be her biological. Uh, little ones, but yeah, she's a she's a a rule breaker. <laughs> well, we should remind our viewers this will be uh, running and through March 31st. And we'd like to thank you both, Patricia Floyd and Takara Cash, from Huntington Theatre Company, and the production is called Skeleton Crew.